Hi, this is Michael. And this is Nico. For our final project, we tried to get the Iwa to skip a rock. Rock skipping is a relatively simple, dynamic task that can be done by many people, even the kid in this picture. We thought it would be pretty cool to see if we could get a robot to do the same thing. The first challenge of our project was to model the dynamics of skipping. Skipping occurs when a rock collides with water and a surface force propels the rock upwards. We modeled this collision using a drag force outlined in a previous paper. This force is directly proportional to the contact area of the rock and favors a flat geometry and velocity. This is intuitive for how we understand skipping. For our simulation setup, we have the EWA arm positioned next to the water surface and table. Based on the dynamics, we chose a flat hockey puck shape for our rock and centered it on top of the table. Behind the scenes, we implemented a force system to apply the spatial force from the water. Here is the general flow of our system where we specify parameters, such as the known rock location, desired throw velocity, and release height. We then manipulate the arm to pick up the rock and throw it with the desired parameters. Lastly, we simulate the skipping dynamics. Our setup consists of a state machine to switch how we command the arm. For each of these states, we have a different underlying control method as shown. For the pickup state, we utilize simple kinematic planning and differential inverse kinematics to drag the rock to the edge of the table. This enables us to get an antipodal grasp on the rock as shown in the video. Once we pick up the rock, we load the rock to an ideal initial throwing position. We initially thought to try a similar approach with kinematic throwing by creating radial poses as seen in the picture, but we were unable to throw the rock any faster than 6 meters per second. This occurred since, di since differential inverse kinematics only utilizes the very next pose, which would lead to unadvantageous joint positions. To overcome this, we switched to kinematic trajectory optimization. We knew we wanted a similar radial throwing trajectory. Specifically, we wanted the trajectory to pass through a release pose and a final pose as shown in the image. Since the release of the rock matters the most when throwing, we added orientation and velocity constraints at this point. In the image, you can see these poses as well as the yellow trajectory line created from the optimization. Here is a video of the arm throwing the rock. And here is a video of the, the rock skipping after being thrown. We ran our implementation over a desired set of throwing velocities. Throws were not perfect. The actual release velocity of the rock was much less than expected. This is likely due to the rock colliding with the gripper on an imperfect release. We just used the two finger gripper, which is not necessarily optimal for skipping a rock. However, we still did get the rock to skip and saw that higher velocities led to more skips. We can also see the contact force decreases with each impact. After many long days, we actually did get it to skip. However, we ran into a lot of problems along the way. We saw from our results earlier that rock velocities below 10 meters per second would not skip. Uh, but we kept running into problems where the rock would fly out of the, of the gripper at desired velocities over 25 meters per second. We tried a few things to prevent this, but none of them helped. We tried different grasps, increasing grip force, decreasing the simulation DT, and even increasing friction. Still, none of this helped. And we saw the rock slip out as shown. Outside of problems with the gripper, we had some problems planning. Originally, we hoped to test how release height may affect skipping. The dynamics would tell us that a lower release height is best because this leads to a flatter velocity. But our trajectory optimizer had a hard time solving for various release heights. The results we did get indicate that a lower release height is in fact better, but we need more fine tuning in order to prove this. In conclusion, skipping is possible, but very difficult. We learned a lot about simulations in Drake throughout this entire project, and we confirmed that rock skipping requires a high velocity. In the future, we would like to address some of the limitations of our system and create a more capable implementation. We would also like to test the effect that a changing rock geometry has on skipping. We can use data from a test like this to inform a perception system that looks at a bed of rocks and can identify which is best for skipping based on geometric parameters. Then using the same perception system, we can pick up this, locate and pick up this rock in order to have a fully autonomous system. Thank you for your time.